Oh, look at that rust in there. Oh, this one's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Okay, well, let's see what we can do with this one. That's what we pulled out of this side. Oh. Pins move good. to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we've got a 2018 Jeep Wrangler Sport S Unlimited. We're going to be replacing the front brake pads and rotors on this Jeep today. First thing we want to do is get the lug nuts loosened up. We'll do this on both sides. Jack under, get it up on the jack stands. Same on the other side. I had to do the same thing on the other side earlier. So don't let your, let it kid you that it came off so easy. This one here is coming off the same way the other one did.
That's how you get one of these babies off when it's stuck. Now when you go to order your brakes for your Jeep Wrangler, make sure you know the diameter of your rotor. Uh, I'm lacking a measuring means at the moment, but I believe that we have 330 millimeter rotors. They also make 342, 328, and then they make some smaller ones for the two-door version. So be very careful about what size you're getting. And it's a T30 Torx right here. I've already snapped this one off trying to get it out, so we're going to brand new one and try it again. This time I'm going to use the impact and probably also the torch. Yeah, that doesn't want to budge, so I'm going to heat the bolt up with the torch. It's probably got red Loctite on it. This is exactly how I broke it the last time. That's a pretty hefty bolt. And again, same thing on the other side. Well, the owner's not here, so I don't have the keys to turn the wheel. So we're gonna take the caliper off first. It's 13 millimeter. Grab a hook, put your uh, caliper up on. Now we're going to need a clamp to push this back just a hair. This is probably going to go all the way. Yep. And just enough to get the tension off the brake pads. That also verifies that both of the pistons are moving nice and easily, so we're not going to have any caliper issues. Now let's get these upper these bolts the rest of the way out. Set them aside nice and safe. Go ahead and lift your caliper off. Oh, take note, we have a ripped boot. So this will be a caliper replacement in the very near future. These have phenolic pistons in them. Uh, so we're going to have
have to let the owner know that he needs a new caliper. But we will proceed as usual. Hang it up out of the way. Brake pads. They, well, the outboard moves. The inboard does not. Before we get any further into that side, let's find out what this caliper is looking like also. Okay, this one's a little stiffer. The top piston's not sticking, but the bottom one is. And we might need two calipers. Oh yeah, that's that bottom one is sticking big time. Okay, so let's get this off and do a visual inspection on it. This one here doesn't look like it has any damage, so we'll try pushing this piston back a little bit more and see what happens. It's got an old brake pad. Oh, oh yeah, they're both nice and stuck. You guys want one of these tools? Keep watching my videos. Pretty soon, I'm going to be giving one of these brand new away. Continental 48 states. Just put in a comment on the appropriate video when I announce it, and we're getting close. We push the pistons all the way back in. These are going back in without too much effort, so I think we are going to be okay on this caliper. We're not going to have to worry about it. Now let's go over and do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, uh, it's hung in the wrong direction. Uh, let's see, I'll turn it, I'll put it this way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, this isn't going to work so easy. Will it reach? No, it will not. Okay, you guys are just going to have to trust me on this. Get, come on, stop wandering around. There we go. Put this tool in here like so. Collapse it a little bit first. Put it in. Ow! Put it in here. Don't get bit by it. And torn piston and all. Probably see them going in. Now, be particularly careful of the boots when they're not damaged like this, so that you don't end up with damage like this. All right, they're all the way down in. Yep. All right. Now let's get to taking the brackets off. Now using a 21 millimeter and a breaker bar. Six point sockets. Got to find that right spot for them. Now, I'll use the impact to smooth the rest of the way out. Maybe. Put that 
down with the other bolts. And yes, the brakes are very, very stuck in the bracket. But we will show you how to prevent that from happening and show you why this should never happen. And rotor. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. That's the uh, universal. And the outside is dry. It's also failed on the other side, so it also needs universals. Because these are in constant drive with the wheel, so when you're driving down the road, you're going to hear a clunk, 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 clunk. That's coming from this. Now we don't need to worry about these rotors because we're scrapping them, so I'm going to knock them off the easy way. Time to grab the BFH. Think that's gonna make some noise? Oh yeah. Be very careful, these edges will be very, very sharp and you can easily get cut on them. up this little guy right here picked it up on Amazon I saw this on uh, Eric O's channel South Main Auto and I uh, said this thing is nifty I like this so I went and uh, bought myself one it's called the hub buddy I'll show you how this little guy works I like this thing Cleans up all the way around the studs. We'll get you in here for a close up. And it gives these right in here a nice little shine, a little polish. Now we're going to use it to go the rest of the way around this and clean it up. And it cleans it up nicely. Now you can put the new rotor on it. Now, being that I've already had problems with sizes, let's make sure that they are the same. They are same thick and same hat height, so we're good. Let's go ahead and put some fluid film on here, get the rotor cleaned up, and put on. Now, the weather's getting a little threatening, but apparently, not to those guys. If I can find them here. And 
one right there we go I see if I can get you stable here eh, it doesn't want to stay focused on the little dude hang gliders crazy weather there's two of them up there that one and then there's where is it it's there I know it is there it is yeah. okay well back to uh, the task at hand There in the bottom. Let's go ahead and get this back in place. And just to make sure it's good and tight like it was. put the rotor on the other side and do the same thing. Fuzzies off of it. Set that back down there for a moment. Fluid filling the hub first. Right around the middle. Off again. Now, where's that little screw hole? Down here, towards facing towards me. Right here. Let's get that one situated. screw. There it is. And again, we had to chisel this one out, so we're going to file that one down flat too. Good. Now well, let's start getting these caliper brackets reconditioned. Boy, these are going to be fun. All right. These brake pads are super stuck. And, well, that's because this is a New England salt belt thing where they just, this happens. So, we're going to knock the pads inward 
take note if there's any squealers, uh, wear indicators on these. Uh, in this case, I don't see anything that even resembles a wear indicator. The only thing I see is very stuck brake pads. Something interesting going on here. So these hook the brake pads and pull them back out. Spring action right there. Of course we broke it, but that little springs to pull them back. So maybe we can knock this one out. Yep. I can get one of these out of here for you. Oh, yeah, be careful. These things are sharp. See all that rust underneath there? That squeezes these clips so hard that these edges squeeze the ear of the brake pad and it won't allow it to move. So we have to clean all of this up and then we're going to put a sealer on top of it before we put the new hardware in. We're also going to free up this stuck pin. That one's okay. This one here is frozen. So we've got a project. Another thing to be especially careful of, whether or not you got brakes that came with hardware. In this case, we have our bag of hardware clips and they match what we currently have. And we have four individually wrapped brake pads. Unwrap all of these and take note of things like squealers. Squealer. Squealer. And squealer. Well, let's go ahead and get these cleaned up in here now so that these can slide in and out of here almost like there was no clip in here at all. And we got two for each side. So there'll be opposites like this. So we got two for this side, two for the other side. There is no difference in the curves on the bottom or the top, so there's no inboard or outboard difference. Always be really vigilant of those things. Sometimes there will be little dimples on the, the brake pad. You've got to be mindful of this stuff. So, I'll get one set of pads over there and look into the hardware bag. This right here is the hardest part of the entire job is getting this caliper bracket cleaned and as much rust scale removed as possible with as little metal removal as possible. And you don't want to have your brake pads so loose they start flopping around. But this is the most time consuming part of the entire process is making sure that these grooves are clean Idealistically, you'd want to use the sandblaster on this, but portable applications, mobile applications, don't exactly have a uh, sandblaster handy. Now, we'll clean this up some more, and we'll be right back. Oh, look at that rust in there. Oh, this one's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. 
Okay, well, let's see what we can do with this one. Have movement. Try something a little bit different than what I normally do. <clears throat> and actually, right at the moment, probably not going to work. So we'll wait a few minutes. <clears throat> wow, that's a stock. part now is going to get this pin out. I win and I got it out with the rubber piece intact yay all right now we get to clean this up mini machine shop mini lathe Sharp edges off of it. And we'll clean up down here at the bottom where you see it's been a little bit of a problem. Now 
I'm not going flat across, I'm kind of rotating so that we don't flat spot any of the metal. Alright, I don't have any severe pitting. See any issues with the pen? But this is why a brake job is not as easy as just slapping on pads and calling it a day because this is never going to work. off of here somebody could get cut on including me all right now we need to clean this out break out the one gun cleaning brush and the brake cleaner what do I tell you all the time don't aim it towards yourself Rinse it out. Ugh. Now, if all is done well, this will go ah, just the way she likes it. Right, so that one's all set. That one's all freed up. Now we just get some white lithium or the. Uh, Silicone grease. Get this one off of here. Oh, there's a little rust up in here too. Yeah, a little rust up in there too, but that's not as bad. Mini machine shop. Oh, that one's got a rubber piece on it too. That's unusual. I'm not used to seeing rubbers on both. Need mini machine shop. Yeah, we'll do mini machine shop. It, it does matter better. Work. That's what it looks like. Clean that side out as well.
almost done with this side. Alright, now that we've got everything all cleaned up and freed up, let's get these slide pins lubricated. Too, so that the boot doesn't dry out and then let moisture in it also lets me take a really good gander at the condition of the boot and yes this makes your fingers really gross and disgusting but that vacuum seal going on alright. There we go. Yeah, just a little bit more. Not a lot. There's that wrinkle wrinkle. And same thing on this one. down pin goes all the way down so we're not going to get hydro stuck <laughs> new word hydro stuck and let's get some anti seize on this so we can put our clips in all right it's just aluminum anti seize stuff that's not going to melt under heat dissolve in water or salt. It's not critical that it's anti-seize, but it has to be something that's not going to dissolve in the water or salt. Coat this metal really good. Spray paint probably would work. But I think spray paint is probably just a little bit too much to try to accomplish. Make sure you get all the surfaces in, the, in here good. Don't get any on the inside. I'll wipe that off right there. But Because uh, you don't want to get this on the rotor. You don't want your rotor to be anti-seized. It's not going to seize, but you do want it to be able to stop. And just all the surfaces where the clips are going to come in contact with. But the most important ones are the ones on the inside right here. These are where it's the most important. Wipe the access off on the inside. Try not to get it on your fingers because this stuff gets everywhere. Now let's break out the brand new brake pads and clips. Four clips on each. So I got four clips for this side, four clips for the other side. They will be in pairs. You'll have a top and a bottom and an in and an out. See, like these two were opposites. These two were opposites, so that's one bracket. Let's get these installed. Now remember, these little tabs right here are what your uh, brake pads are going to be sitting in and it pulls them. So this has to face it in towards your center where your rotor goes. So little springs face out. 
springy metal part faces towards the back of the, the clip. And it should snap all the way down in, flat like that. And then this part right here is just the springy to keep your brake pad from rattling. Again, same thing, other side. Get little tabs that'll help lo locate everything. You hear that click? There you go, Ray. Caliper bracket hardware click. Hardware is in place, everything is lubed. Looks crooked. Well, why it looks crooked, but let's take the brake pads and put them in now. Now this sits on the bracket this way, leading edge is the bottom, squealer at the bottom. Roll these in. Just like that. If you have to fight with them to get them in, it means you need to take these back apart and you need to take this hardware clips out and you need to remove more rust from underneath them. As long as everything moves, whoops, not so easy that it falls out on you though. Once everything is in and does what it's supposed to do, then you can go ahead and take your assembly, and set it over your rotor. And we're going to grab the big thick bolts. I'm only going to put one in for the moment. I find a hole for it. Now, blue thread locker. Where did I hide my blue thread locker? I could have sworn I brought it over here. All right, back when I find my blue thread locker. Didn't have to go far. It was on the other side. One drop on the bolt, right where the rusty part of the thread is. One big drop like that. And what that'll do is it'll it'll run around the rust, it'll stop the rust, and it'll keep your bolt from working itself back out on you. Get that started, now take the other one back out, and again, same thing. Drop on there, and get that threaded back in. On so it doesn't dry out on you. And we'll go get the breaker bar with a 21 millimeter socket on it and tighten these down. Tighten these up evenly. and then torque them to specifications. Click. Click. Now we can put the caliper back on. And we're gonna put blue thread locker on both of these little bolts also. Off the hook, bring the 
caliper down and set her in place. Almost. Well, these pistons have got to go back in just a bit more. Pistons might have gotten pushed out while I was pushing the other ones in. Yeah, that's all the way down. Yeah, make sure she fits. Also, make sure that you don't have any twist in your hose. Everything fits on here nice and easy. Just to potentially stop any future squealing noises where the brake pads make contact with the piston. Put a little bit of anti seize on the piston. Just like that. And then paint the ears. Where they come in contact with the brake pads. Like that. And then go ahead and put your caliper on. Like that. Top bolt in. You might have to rotate these pins to get things to line up. Now those were 13 millimeter. still because the bolt wants to spin it. Take your hook down. Torque. And torque. These don't have to be excessively tight, but they do have to be snug. And again, the thread locker will make sure that if they're not tight enough, they won't come out. So, this side's all done. Go finish up the other side. And make sure to check your brake fluid level. You get a flashlight behind, it makes it a little easier to see where your level is. You can see where the level is there. Make sure that it's not over full. Make sure that it is where it's supposed to be. We're below the max and above the minimum. So we're good to go. 
And we also want to make sure that we have enough room in here for when we push the pistons the rest of the way in, which they already are, uh, that we don't overflow this. So be mindful of your fluid levels before you start the brake job. Well, there's the codes that we got out of it. That last one I like. Please refer to manual storage for radio. But a couple of little minor electrical body things. That's it.
Well, there you have it. A 2018 Wrangler Unlimited Sport, front brakes, rotors, and stock caliper bracket. If you guys liked that one, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for upcoming videos, and most importantly, don't, re don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. Brakes, rotors, stock caliper, uh, and complete brake job.